My name is Lisa Sorrell and I'm a custom cowboy boot maker. I love making cowboy boots. It is my passion to make cowboy boots, especially for men, because men have so few options. And I love to make colorful, creative cowboy boots. I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy making things. And that's what appeals to me about making cowboy boots, is I get to satisfy the artistic side of me with the design and the colors. But at the same time, building a cowboy boot is hard physical labor. And so, I'm working hard, I'm sweating, I'm putting literally my blood, sweat, and tears into some of these boots. So these are boot tops. All of the decorative work is done on a boot top while the panels are flat. You've got two front panels and two back panels. So what I have here is one front panel and one back panel. And I've used my pattern and I've marked the design on and I've stitched it. That's stitched one row at a time. And there's no computer, so that's all guided by me. So I have the decorative work done on the panels, and now what I'm going to do is put the counter on the back panel. The counter is the hard part that goes around your heel. I'm just going to lay that on there. In this Crimping this up this way gives me a little extra fullness in this heel area because the back of your heel is not flat, it's a curve. And so you need to have some fullness to curve out around your heel. The front part of the foot is called the vamp. And I have my vamp here. You can see it's a really three-dimensional shape because it's been cramped. It used to be a flat piece of leather. I'm going to mark where that goes. This is a really sophisticated tool here. It's an old sock filled with baby powder. I got into cowboy boots and cowboy boot making quite by accident. I wasn't raised cowboy. In fact, I was raised in a conservative little church where the women all wear long hair and long dresses. And so I started sewing clothing when I was 12. My mom began teaching me to sew so I could make those long dresses. And by the time I was 15, I was sewing professionally for ladies in my church. And at 20, my husband and I married and moved from Missouri to Oklahoma, and I left my business behind. And after, three, after six months in a three-room apartment, I got bored, and I answered an ad in the paper for stitching boot tops. I had no idea what that was, and I'd never worn a pair of cowboy boots. And so I got this job, and it was sewing, and that appealed to me because I was good at it, but it was also hammering. And in the church that I was raised in, things tended to be very segregated. Girls did girl things and boys did boy things. And I loved to sew, but it was a girl thing. And I hated that conforming, that doing what I was expected part of it. And so boot making appealed to me on that level, that I got to make things. And the old boot maker, Jay Griffith, that I worked for, he was an alcoholic. And I'd never been around anyone who drank. And so I'd been there about two months before someone finally explained to me that the reason he stumbled a lot was because he was drunk. I had no clue. And he used to have these screaming matches with employees and I would go hide in the bathroom and cry because I'd never been around that. But I loved boot making from the very beginning and I knew that's what I wanted to do. After a year and a half with Jay, I quit and I started stitching tops for bootmakers independently across the country out of my home. And that for me was not the end goal at all. It was just a way for me to keep my foot in the door until I could find a bootmaker who would train me. And after three years of doing that, I found a former student of Jay's and I paid him to train me. That's one thing that people often don't realize the way you get into bootmaking. I have people call me and they say, I'll come work for you. That's not how you get into boot making. If you're an employee, I tell you what you need to know to do your job, and then you get paid to do that. If you're an apprentice, then you pay a boot maker to teach you. And so there are differences between employees and apprentices. I paid to be an apprentice and learned boot making and then started my own shop in 1996. I'm trying to hide all the wrinkles underneath working all the wrinkles out. 
that's what I like about making cowboy boots is I get to create something tangible, something real, and then it goes out and it has a whole life separate from me. And I like to hear from my customers when they say, I took your boots, I wore them to a party and I met this person, or I wore your boots here and did this. It's like little pieces of me are going out and having, having lives of their own. Each boot is like my little child.